Welcome back to Adventures Through Climate Change, where we're exploring what the heck is climate change? What is going on? Uh, is there a big need for uh, all the fear? It, I mean, is the world ending for human kinds? I, I don't think the earth is ever ending in and of itself. Um, different forms, different times, you know, uh, obviously the moon's moving away a couple inches every year. Things change, right? Uh, is it something we have to worry about? It, do we have to throw money at it? Has it worked in the past? And what is the history of climate change? When did it, we start worrying about it? All these questions we are looking to answer. And we're sitting in our chairs doing an armchair search, meaning I'm looking up stuff, I'm reading it. But we're doing a lot of videos because they entertain you. So today's video, uh, and they entertain me too. Uh, today's video is actually, uh, it's about the Milankovitch cycle because what I realized was that um, many people in the past video didn't know what the uh, Milankovitch cycle was a couple videos ago. And so, and I didn't do a good job explaining it. So we're going to take a look at this one. It's how ice ages happen, the Milankovitch cycles. Uh, it's just astronomical. It's three years ago, 8 million views, though. Uh, I think it does a good job explaining things. So let's check it out. Over Earth's long history, there have been dramatic changes to our climate. The ice ages have come and gone. Mm -hmm. And what's surprising is that there's a strong pattern that explains why ice ages happen when they do. This is called the Milankovitch cycle. Named after Milutin Milankovitch, his theory explains how the Earth's climate changes over hundreds of thousands of years. His theory is based on two key ideas. First, the Earth's climate is strongly affected by how much sunlight the northern latitudes receive during the summer. Mm -hmm. Second, this amount of sunlight varies based on changes in the Earth's orbit and rotation. Why are the northern latitudes so important? It's Probably because tough. of ice. When sunlight hits the ground, most of the energy is absorbed as heat. But if the ground is covered in ice, most of the light reflects away because ice is white. This creates a positive Albedo. feedback loop. Ice forms when it's cold, but ice also reflects light making it colder, which forms more ice. So ice is really important for climate. Mm -hmm. The northern and southern hemispheres both contain lots of ice. But there's more ice in the north because there's more land. Land has a lower heat capacity than water, which means that water doesn't change temperature as easily as land does. This is why mm. coastal regions are generally more mild and why ice forms more easily on land. Just mm. look at the difference between the Makes northern sense. and southern hemispheres. In the south, there are ice caps that grow during its winter, but not nearly as much as they do in the north. During the winter, the land above the Arctic Circle is covered in darkness, experiencing twice. See the tilt? That's what I was talking about because that's because the way the land is, the uh, and you're tilting back here, right? It's obviously going to be cold up up there, away from the sun. Of course, that all changes in orbit and everything. But twilight, twenty four hours a day. It's very cold, and lots of ice forms during the winter, and this is true no matter what's going on with Earth's orbit. The key variable here is how much ice melts during the summer. This depends on how much sunlight there is during the summer. Now you might think that this doesn't change. But it does. Milankovitch showed that over hundreds of thousands of years, the amount of summer sunlight can shift plus or minus 15%. This can bring ice ages. This can end ice ages. How can the amount of summer sunlight be changing? Well, first, the distance from the Earth to the sun is changing. And second, the Earth's tilt is changing. The Earth's axis is currently tilted at 23 and a half degrees, but this changes. Other objects mm -hmm. influence the Earth gravitationally, a lot of that nudging ice. its tilt up and down. Every 41,000 years, it cycles. 
that's the wobble when they say that earth uh has a tilt but it's on a wobble that's what that wobble is and um it does af affect climate obviously up and down when the earth is more tilted there's more sunlight during the summer more summer sunlight means that more of our ice melts away mm. with less ice on the ground less light is reflected away giving us a warmer climate mm -hmm. Earth is unusual in that its tilt doesn't change very much. Earth has a very large moon, which stabilizes its tilt. Hmm. Mars Makes has sense. two tiny moons, and so its tilt changes much more dramatically. The next effect is the distance from the Earth to the Sun. The Earth's orbit is not a circle. It's an ellipse. Every 4th of July. I wonder if uh, I'm sorry I'm stuck on the Mars thing. I wonder if with the with the moons too, because they're in two different positions, they're pulling at different parts. Also, liquid water. Um, why we have the tides is because the moon goes around and it's pulling with a gravitational pull on that water, making the Earth more of like an you know o oval shape rather than round, just because it's being pulled. So that water is following the moon as it's going around. Um, and with Mars being so dry, I wonder if also that just gives a bigger tilt because there's not as much stuff that can uh, move with it, right? I don't know. Makes sense. We celebrate head. aphelion, the day that the Earth is furthest from the sun. Mm. Then in January, the Earth moves closest to the sun. Now the planets Jupiter and Saturn both nudge the Earth, causing its orbit to shift slightly becoming either more oval or more circular. This happens over a period of 100,000 years. This effect is wildly exaggerated in this diagram. <laughs> it actually looks more like this. You can barely even see that the distance to the sun is changing, but this subtle change has important consequences for our climate. Earth as a whole receives 6% more sunlight during January than it does in July. The seasons change because the North Pole sometimes tilts towards the sun and sometimes tilts away. The change in the distance to the sun, this works against the change in the seasons. This moderates the seasons in the North since the Earth is furthest away in July. But this was not always true. That's the Earth's axis is moving in a circle. It's spinning like a top this is called precession. In fact, I made an entire video about this. And what this means is that 13,000 years ago, the tilt of the Earth was reversed. When the Earth was closest to the sun, it was summer in the north. The distance change didn't oppose the seasons, it amplified seasons, making them more extreme. Now, warmer summer means more melting. More melting means less reflection, which means the climate as a whole is warmer. The amount of summer sunlight is affected by three long-term cycles. One changes the tilt. One makes our orbit more circular or more oval. And one changes how the distance to the sun matches with the changing of the season. Eccentricity, precession, and axis tilt, which, uh, what was that word? I'm drawing a blank on it now. Uh, it starts with an O. Obligatory. I don't know. Uh, but that's the axis tilt. And those were the three things I was hoping they were going to tell us from the very beginning that encompasses the Milenkovich cycle. And uh, I did, they got precession right in right at the end. Let them finish. These three cycles powerfully impact our climate. Scientists have measured the history of our climate using ice cores. Now, Earth's climate is complicated. You can't just reduce it to a single input. But the Milankovitch cycles have played a key role in our climate for hundreds of thousands of years. For more astronomical videos, please click to subscribe. Okay, let's break it down. Um, I thought that was pretty good. Uh, a little bit more simplistic. I was hoping they were going to go into a little bit more of the, uh, the three different... Uh, 
main contributing factors to the Milinkovic uh, cycle. And then what we've seen is the Milinkovic cycle doesn't explain it all. It explains, and, and he said it at the very end where it's like a key factor. Oh man, I got my automatic vacuum going in the background. I don't know if you guys can hear that, but I got the door shut and everything, but she is so loud when she's suction. Oh my gosh, we call her Cinderella. She's working all the time, three days a week. Anyways, uh, it doesn't encompass it all. It's just a, a, a part of it, what they're, what they're seeing. And um, at the time, you know, early 1900s or whatever, when Milinkovic came up with this, uh, it was, it, they thought it was kind of a standalone theory and they could base it off. That's why climate change is so much early on based off of the Milinkovic cycle. And as we've uh, gone along, I've added to it. And then Mr. Ellis uh, informed us and we'll catch his second part um, that uh, there's actually a lot more to it and it has to do with uh, more the albedo, um, the uh, ref ref reflection of light um, a refraction. I'm not sure if that's the same or different. Um, and also dust coating that ice and what that does, uh, for the albedo and insulation really. So, uh, man, this was a, this was a good one. I thought we should go back to the basics. We'll probably go back to the basics for a few of these, get to know what they're talking about. And then, um, kind of, we'll go back into Mr. Ellis's video, uh, the part two and finish what he's saying with that. Cause it was a little bit more complex and I'm sure I got plenty of blank stares. So, um, with that being said, uh, please, if you feel it in your heart, please hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, lay down a comment on what I should watch in the future, uh, or anything that I should change about, uh, how I do videos. I always appreciate uh, positive or negative feedback. Um, as long as it's respectful, you know, like I can tell when it's coming from a good place and I, and I appreciate it. You know, I appreciate people being blunt and honest with me. Um, I do, I do try not to hurt my feelings on purpose, but I totally appreciate it. And, uh, you know what, most importantly, we'll catch you on the next video.